بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن شاء الله today I want to dwell more on this word مستيقن that we spoke about in the previous ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is telling is informing us of the situation of the disbelievers when it is said to them didn't you realize that this day of judgment that you are now standing in front of Allah, that you are in this day, didn't you realize it was is the truth? And they will reply, وَمَا نَدْرِي فِيهَا قُلْتُمْ مَا نَدْرِي مَسَاعَةُ إِنَّ ظُنُّ إِلَّا ظُنَّ We didn't know what the hour was or the day, this day was. We thought it was just, as mentioned yesterday, we thought it was just... Uh, Old wives held in in the just doubtful stuff. Wama nahnu bimustaykinin, and we were not seeking conviction in it. We weren't concerned with it. Now I want to dwell on this word mustaykin, because it's really important for us as Muslims, not not only living in the West but Muslims in this time, because if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is describing the situation of the believers and they are responding we were we were uh وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمُسْتَيْخِنِ we weren't seeking conviction we weren't concerned we we were just happy with living our life i want to reflect upon us and our iman if if the the dwellers of the fire are not mustaqeen they are not seeking conviction what about us and our Islam and do we question why we are Muslims are we Muslims simply because our parents are Muslims is this our Iman I'm a Muslim because that's part of my identity it's part of my cultural heritage my parents are Muslim therefore I am Muslim and we are finding, finding as I mentioned before that many now children our children growing up in these societies are actually saying I don't want to be Muslim anymore that's not my identity I'm, I'm, I've grown up in the West I don't, you know, I don't believe in Islam anymore and we are finding this conundrum amongst not only our youth but it's also an effect this is because of us because we, did, we didn't come to Islam via conviction so shouldn't we as Muslims, as, be, as the ones who say La ilaha illallah, shouldn't we say that with conviction? Or are we only Muslim because the, our parents are Muslim? Shouldn't we, when we say the Shahada, is it something that we are just taught to memorize? Or should it be something that we are taught to be convinced of? We live and grew up in this society that ignores or denies the existence of a creator at best it ignores it at most likely it denies even there is a creator for the universe and this has an effect on us this has an effect on us because we live through life we speak to people we watch tv we read we listen to the news we read newspapers and magazines and articles and twitter feeds and and messages None of them are, and all of them is either, as I said, ignoring the existence of a creator and the reality of life, or denying it. And when we go through school, and when we are taught science, and we are taught all the different st uh, subjects, it is taught from the angle that there is no creator. Na'udhu billahi min dhalik. And this has a big effect on us. Even though we are Muslim, it has a big effect on us. At least in the Muslim countries, you hear the Adhan five times a day. You hear Allahu Akbar five times a day. You hear La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah five times a day. SubhanAllah, my in-laws, they traveled from Syria and they are now living in Germany. And one of the things that really makes them depressed living in Germany is that they do not hear the Adhan. So this has an effect on us living in these countries that ignores the existence of Allah or at, at best or 
in, in reality denies the existence of Allah. So we need to, as Muslims living in the West, we need to explore our Shahada. We need to come to our Shahada as the, the Sahaba came to their Shahada, as each and every Sahibi, companion of the Prophet, came to their Shahada by conviction. And how the early Muslims, the best generations of Muslims, as the Prophet والسلام, he said, is his generation, then the ones that came after, and then the ones that came after. This generation, what was so special about them? They came to Islam via conviction. Now we living in this society, we need to explore our shahada and we need to counter the claims of the atheists. Because these are futile claims. How can you look at the reality, look at the creation and come to any conclusion other than it's created? So we need to be able to counter the claims of the atheists and the agnostics. And when we do that, when we have yaqeen in our shahada, we come to it by conviction, we explore all these claims that people are claiming, the scientists are claiming, the philosophers are claiming, the liberal fan fanatics are claiming, and we are able to refute them and destroy them and come to our affirmation, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, with absolute conviction, that gives us what I call 4D vision. And what do I mean by 4 division? Obviously, reality is in 3D. You have time and space. And the space is three-dimensional. Three but when you come to your, your, your shahada with yaqeen, with absolute conviction, you see life for what it truly is. And you realize life is fake. It is, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in his Quran, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ and what is the life of this world except objects of deception? You come to the realization that the, all that you see is deceitful. It's real, but it's fake. Because what is abs actually real is the Yawm al Qiyamah, is the day of judgment, a day that lasts 50,000 years. And you start to live your life. With see as if uh, with the reality that every action and every utterance and every sight and every touch and every smell that you do will be replayed back to you. I mean, this is the reality of life. The reality of life is that it should be, it was going to be it is going to be repeated in front of Allah, and you are going to be accounted for it. That is the reality of life. So day the do you see the day of judgment as a real as it is. And it come, becomes to you as a real day. Heaven and hell are not stories, are not things that are you hear about from your parents. You realize that these are real outcomes. This is the reality of life. And that your, it, and that your life, everyone wants to live forever. With, without coming, when you come to see life in 4D, you realize that, yes, I am actually going to live forever. As a son of Adam, I die once, but I live twice. So I'm actually going to live forever. But where I live forever is either heaven or hell. Jannah or Nar. This is the reality of life. And that's when you come to your shahada with yaqeen, you start to look at things in this fourth dimension. I was watching uh, with my wife just yesterday, we were watching this uh, TV show that's on BBC around, uh, you know, amazing hotels around the world. And there's one that was in, uh, in Rubi' al Khali, which is like in Arabia. And they created this amazing hotel in the middle of Rubi' al Khali. If you look into Rubi' al Khali, it's this, the barren, it's called the, the empty quarter. There's nothing, there's desert as far as the eye can see. But they created this amazing hotel there. And it's amazing. It is amazing. But I was telling my wife, you know, and these are the things that, you know, if you have money and you have, you know, plenty of money, you think, well, these are the things I need to explore before I die. I need to go to these amazing hotels and see these amazing things and see the Himalayas and see all this stuff. And when I look at this hotel, I said to my wife, my Qasr in Jannah is more amazing than that. My palace in Jannah is more amazing than this hotel can ever be. 
And that's looking at the world in four dimension. You don't have to think, I need to visit these places before I die. You need to visit these places when you are alive. In your paradise, in your garden in Jannah. So you start to think about your garden and your, your eternal life in Jannah as a real thing, as it is a real thing. And what your qasr, what your, 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 your palaces in Jannah will be like. And I was like, I don't, for me, I don't desire these hotels. It'd be nice if I went there. I'm not saying it's bad to go there. But what I really desire is to live in a palace far more magnificent than these for eternity. وَأَقُولِ كَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفُرُ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ